You made it. Nope. Look out. That's caught. Starting off the news this week, a UN panel of scientists have made some very worrying conclusions about the current state of our seas, oceans and frozen areas. They say that there is some although little hope to avoid the worst impact from the severe rise in sea levels and melting of ice, which could release even more carbon into the atmosphere which would in turn hasten the problem. This new report is the third that has been published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change within the last year, and some are saying that this is the most concerning as it looks deeper into the actual impacts that climate change is going to have on our planet. In other news, a new finding has been made about the lives of humans living 3,000 years ago, as archaeologists have discovered animal fat in what seems to be clay baby bottles, suggesting that these were used to feed babies with milk to supplement breastfeeding in the Iron and Bronze Ages. Dr Julie Dunn told the BBC that this technology gives prehistoric women the opportunity to have more offspring, which would in turn lead to a massive population increase although it is worth noting that feeding babies in this way would have imposed health risks upon the child, giving room for infection to spread through the difficult to clean bottles. In the paleontology news this week, a fascinating study has been published that examined the extent of methylation in preserved DNA, utilising this to determine what the mysterious Denisovan humans could have looked like. Looking at methylation patterns in the DNA and how certain genes are suppressed, the researchers were able to link the changes of the DNA structure to the physical characteristics that would have been expressed. Testing this technique by reconstructing Neanderthal and chimp skeletal anatomies and achieving a precision of more than 85% in determining divergent traits. Using this on Denisovans, it was discovered that they probably had elongated faces and wide pelvises like Neanderthals, but also had increased dental arches and wider craniums, which are features unique to Denisovans. So not only has this paper given us our first glimpse at to what these cryptic ancient humans may have appeared like in life, but it also demonstrates that, excitingly, epigenetics can be used to work out certain anatomical characteristics, even when they aren't preserved directly as fossils. Also in this week's news, some interesting research has been done on the swimming style of mosasaurs. These reptiles have always been assumed to have been cruising animals that use their tails to propel themselves through the water. However, now paleontologists have taken a closer look at the relatively enlarged pectoral girdles present in the more derived members of the group, revealing that there were some very large muscle attachments here that would have allowed their powerful forelimbs to be used for propulsion too. So not only were these reptiles swimming with their tails similar to how whales propel themselves but they were likely employing their front limbs for some extra bursts of speed resulting in a method of underwater locomotion unlike that of any living creature and finally we welcome a new species of pterosaur Named Nerhachius luii, this animal dates back to the early Cretaceous hailing from western Liaoning, China the fossil itself is comprised of a complete skull and mandible, in addition to a few neck vertebra, and displays a tooth replacement pattern unlike any other pterodactyloids, in which the new tooth erupted on a different side of the old tooth. Thank you for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.